You may know Rex Chapman as a social media influencer who shares heartwarming videos and hot takes on social issues. You may remember him for his ability to electrify fans at the University of Kentucky and in the NBA. Or you may know Chapman as that former basketball player busted for stealing from an Apple store 10 years ago. Rex Chapman made more than $20 million in his playing career and lost it all to addiction. But he's bounced back and lived to tell his tale, which is what he's done in Rex Chapman, It's Hard for Me to Live with Me, a memoir. Basketball is the only thing I ever wanted to do. And for most of Rex Chapman's uh, life, I, I it's all he it. did. At what point as a kid did you feel like you were special? From the very first time I played. Really? Yeah. Rex Tyson puts it in the air, drills it. What a basketball game. Rex played day and night in basketball craze Kentucky. His dad, a former pro player turned coach, raised him on the state's two passions, hoops and horse racing. I grew up, I could read a racing form before I could read a newspaper. On the court, Rex was dunking before his sophomore year of high school. And one of the spectacular efforts turned in by Rex Chapman from Owensboro, Kentucky. The attention that drew wasn't always what he'd hoped for. The guy puts his arm around me and says, hey, you play just like an N-word, but you still get to be white. And the guy said it, and I kind of did a double take, and I looked at him like, "Are you, like, this is a joke, right? And I just remember being mad, just being mad. As he writes in his self-titled memoir, race would prove to be inescapable. Friends with his black teammates, he was discouraged for years from going public with his high school sweetheart, Sean. It was like this dirty little secret that everybody wanted to have hidden, and that made me feel really bad. It also made me feel like a fraud. I knew I wasn't a fraud on the basketball court, but I felt like one off the court, and that really bothered me. It still bothers me, obviously. While the two would eventually split, they continued dating in college. I decided to further my academics and athletics at the University of Kentucky. Rex Chapman does his thing. Known as King Rex, he scored more than 1,000 points in just two seasons with the Wildcats, leaving Kentucky for the NBA. The eighth pick in the 1988 draft, he landed in Charlotte. Muggsy Bogues brings the ball to Chapman. He fires for three. He got it. Nice Where shot. he was mentored by teammates Muggsy Bogues and Del Curry. Del and Sonia really, and Muggsy and Kim, they really took care of me. I didn't know how to cook. I didn't know how to do laundry. I didn't know how to put on a tie. It probably stunted some of my growth because I continued to allow people to do everything for me, everything except play basketball. Unbelievable. 29 points for King Rex. Four Rex three, averaged two, 14 and a half points in 12 NBA seasons. He was expected to be named an All-Star in 1994 when he shattered his ankle. Chapman trying to create something here. What? Oh, he lands hard. And part of a career defined That's by injuries. I had seven surgeries my last three years of playing. And when I got out of the surgery, you know, for a day or two, you take the pain medicine. Then came a surgery for appendicitis and a new painkiller from his doctor. This was a prescription for three Oxycontin a day for a month. It's like 90 Oxycontin. It's really not something you need painkillers for, some Tylenol and see ya. But I had it, and uh, he said, take it, trust me on this. So I took it, and honestly, within two days, I was in love. Rex would choose retirement over a battle back into the league, falling into depression with twin addictions, gambling, and pills. He writes, by the end of the year, I am up to 9 or 10 Oxycontins a day and 40 Vicodins. I know I have an issue, but I don't consider myself an addict. This is medicine, not drugs. I figure it isn't anything I can't handle. There's not enough doctor pharmacy swindling or lying to get your prescription. You're not going to be able to, to keep up, so drug dealer is the only other option. Rex would do two stints in rehab, but he couldn't shake his dependencies until his arrest in Arizona in 2014. You're here on five counts of trafficking and stolen property in the first degree, class two felonies, and nine counts of organized retail theft. Charged for repeatedly shoplifting at an Apple store, then pawning items to pay off his debts, Rex had finally hit 
rock bottom. And I realized I'd embarrassed myself. I had uh, disappointed myself. I disappointed my family, my friends, my kids. If I'm going to live, I need to try to make this better and make it, you know, do, do things differently going forward. A third and more exhaustive rehab came next, helping Rex slowly put his life back together. When I went in, I was taking about 40 Vicodin in a day. And about he speaks to groups struggling with addiction and has been outspoken on issues of race. And King Rex has built a whole new set of fans. <laughs> 1.2 million, to be precise, on social media. I had a lady come up to me the other day. She said, I just love your Twitter. I said, you don't know me as a basketball player? She said, no, I didn't. I said, weird. You put this good in a space that had become very toxic. Yeah. Why? I'm not a feel-good guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that guy. I'm trying to trick myself Self, in, to feeling good, to feel right. good. But yeah, completely unexpected, the Twitter thing. Okay, a little more follow through. His book, written with veteran journalist I'm Seth Jordan, Davis, is another chapter in recovery, in both the time spent together and the lessons Rex continues to learn. Oh. Hey! hey. Yeah, what do you hope that somebody can take from the book? I hope that people will read this book and read about Rex's story and understand that it's okay to be sad. I hope there is healing yeah. for him. And I would say to him so often, Rex, if I did all these things and I asked you to forgive me, you would do it in a second. Right. But I ask you to forgive yourself and it's a non-starter. I talk to myself really poorly too. And he'd say, hey, stop talking to my friend like that. That's very Seth. I can hear him <laughs> saying that. It is. I'm still trying to learn. I feel like I stopped playing basketball at 32. I woke up a couple months ago and went, I'm 55, thinking I was 45. Time slipped away and I'm, I guess, just trying to make up for a little bit of it. So I think I came up and set a pick. One way Rex does that, kid. finding joy, yep, including in the one thing he always wanted to do. <laughs> basketball. There it is. You know, a couple things. Rex and I talked a lot about the shame that he still feels right now. So I said, why write this and put everything out mm -hmm. there? It's because he knows it can help. And he hopes that it can help people learn from the mistakes he made. And I do want to point out Sean, that girlfriend from high school, he is friends with her today. Um, so you hope that there's some healing, as Seth talked about in all of this. And, and Rex was so open in this book. It's really an amazing read. It just looks like a completely different and feels like a completely different person. And I guess yeah. it is in many ways. Yeah. Just, I remember watching him when he was at Kentucky and then you see him now and what he did then and what he does now. I think it's... some of it is the openness and honesty which he has in his life. And that's part of what we see in Twitter, which follow him if you don't, because it's a fun follow. So much conversation.